Let's meet our panel. He is an Emmy Award winning writer and comedian. Comedian, one of my favorite comedians. He just released a comedy, L an LP. I love that, an LP. I'll put it next to my Cream Records <laughs> called Funhouse. Dana Gould is back with us. Dana. He hosts for Zakaria GPS on our sister, our sister network. That's what Wolf Blitzer calls it on CNN, and is editor at large of Time Magazine. One of the smartest people in the national debate. Fareed Zakaria is coming back to join us, and he was just reelected to his sixth term as U.S. Congress from California's 49th district. He will chair the Oversight Committee. We all want to be very nice tonight to Representative Darrell Ice. <laughs> Congratulations on your, on your big victory. And let me continue a thought from the monologue there. And I don't mean this in any facetious or the didactic way, but just please explain to me this election. How could people who are struggling, really struggling, economically worse than they have in so many decades, why did they pull the lever for the party that says out front, we're not going to extend unemployment benefits. Their big plan seems to be give rich money, rich people more money, or, or let rich people's kids inherit more money. I, I just want to know why they voted Republican. Just tell me the voodoo that you do. You know, we, we did as we said, we've changed. We've learned from our mistakes. And you now know the Democratic Party hasn't learned from theirs. It's that simple. Government is too big. You talked about tax increases. But your plans are this, uh, this I mean, uh, less regulation, which got us into the mess with the banks, um, taxing, uh, less taxes, uh, un unfunded tax cuts, which didn't work very well in the Bush years. Um, I, what is different? I don't understand. Well, first of all, the, the stimulus was an unfunded spending, too. You can have more spending, less taxes, but it but it and the disconnect. It, it worked. We have more unemployment, but we say we didn't have as any losses as we would have had. Look, isn't that good? No, it isn't. Hmm? What, here's what we really have. We have a situation so bad that if you took that 35 to 39 percent delta of, of the, quote, rich, the over 200,000, if you tax them, if you take that 4 percent and you tax them, you get $70 billion a year. Okay. If you take 100% of that revenue, take it to 100%, take every penny over $200,000, you get about $900 billion. Guess what? If you take every penny that every person makes over $200,000, you don't eliminate the deficit. We've got to do more than just tax the rich to get out of this deficit. And we can do it, but we've got to grow our economy. But shouldn't we tax the rich as a start? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it... To get to... To get back to what you said about the election, in terms of the independents, I think independents voted Republican largely for the same reason they voted for Obama two years ago. They're unemployed, they're in a pinch, and they're freaked out, and they took a flyer on what wasn't in office at the time. And I think in two years, if things don't train, change drastically, you'll see the same thing again. I think we're in for a long period of drastic shifts every two years. But it blows my mind, like Christine O'Donnell in her uh, concession speech, now she lost by 17 points and still thought a squeaker. She, a squeaker and still thought that she had the right in her concession speech to tell her opponent who just kicked her ass what he should do yeah but that's she chicks. doesn't really get it <laughs> that's chicks. and what she said was uh, uh, that's all right. Lisa Mikowski she, she, she hasn't didn't... gloated yet either. Oh, I'll get to her. But, but Christine O'Donnell could have named any issue as she's got one minute to say one thing. And she said, my opponent, yeah, he kicked my ass, but he better not mess with the estate tax. The estate tax is something that does not affect 99 point eight percent of the people it doesn't affect one living person that's clear <laughs> <laughs> right but it's she just also, she also said but leave it to a witch to defend ghosts what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that one. That's so good, they're going to think we set it up. No, no, no. She, but she also said subsequently, you know, what we have to do is we have to cut taxes and cut the deficit. These are the two most important things we have to do. And it's a good thing that she's kind of attacking this problem because she's going to need magic to make it, to, to make it work. Right? Because you, I mean, the math doesn't work. You cannot cut taxes and cut the deficit. The, if you let the Bush tax cuts uh, expire, you will lose $700 billion of tax revenue over the next decade. This is not politics. This is math. Now, right. how you fill that math, you know, 
is going to be the ask, What are you looking at me for? Well, hey, I mean, <laughs> we were talking about this talking before about the show. show. And I, I think I, actually, Fried and I worked this out. We, we agree on the math. We, you know, at least, at, which is not true for a lot of Republicans. Right. We because a lot facts. of them will tell you exactly. <laughs> but how, somehow, magically, you can make this happen. How, and we've right. been trying for 25 years. And what we have ended up with is a $20 billion deficit in California and $14 trillion of debt in the United States. Right. And it's because we have been fooling the American people into saying you can have the level of government that you so plainly want. Nobody right. wants to cut Social Security and Medicare. Anything. And yet you can have no taxes. But you can't. You know, that's... So how do you answer that? I mean, you are the winners. But, but from what I hear, I mean, I have seen so many Republicans lately on news shows being embarrassed when they are asked the question, what would you cut? It looks like McHale's Navy. Oh, no, no, that's not fair. Bill, that's not fair. Dick Armey has very forthrightly come out and said he will cut the National Endowment for the Arts, which has, right. no, 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 it has a budget of, I think, $170 million, which is 0.01% of the deficit. And he's not even an so, office anymore. It's a start. It's a start. Bill, we, right, how do you Bill, square that? How do you square that circle? Look, tax cuts, we're going to solve, we're going to reduce people the all, People always want to have tax cuts and all the benefits. You can't have both. What you can have is you can have a fairer, flatter tax with less loopholes. You can have a level of certainty that rewards people for what they make, while at the same time doesn't tell them to chase after tax breaks. On the other side... Do you want to keep these books tax some cuts for let's the take rich? Some, let's take some simple... Do you want to keep those tax cuts I want to have a fairer, flatter tax that has less loopholes. Do you want to keep those tax... Bush I am tax perfectly happy... Bill, I'm perfectly happy to say, let's say at 35 and start wrenching out the, the, the tax breaks to get people well below that so that you really do pay the 35. But, Darrell, let's but, be clear. There are 16,000 pages in the tax code. That's a lot of loopholes. That's four times what many, Obamacare had. Many, many, many of those are going to be fought tooth and nail. What I say is you get rid of the, the... First of all, when you please be clear, when you eliminate tax loopholes, you are raising taxes. You are raising taxes on somebody. That's the only way you raise revenue. So you raise, you raise the taxes and take those 15,000 loopholes, 15,999 pages of loopholes out, and then let's talk. I mean, you say let's you make. don't want spending increases, but isn't keeping the Bush tax cuts the biggest spending increase exactly. we could possibly imagine? It is spending. It's just spending Bill, to put they, money... They were set to expire to begin with because they were unfunded. Right. They, we never could afford them in the first place. They're still unfunded. They were, set to, they were set to expire because of the Bird Rule, which only allowed you to have 10 years under certain provisions without a two-thirds majority in, in the Senate. There were a whole bunch of reasons. I think I know a little bit more about government than you, Congressman. <laughs> you know, and, and be, I've and, released an album. By the way, <laughs> don't be, talk to me about and, this. And before I went to government, I did too. I, uh, uh, although you will, you will find me, you will find protected by Viper stand back on Shaq's album. You know that What's Up exactly. Doc thing. So you will find me recorded. You just won't get credit for it. <laughs> you asked about how we can reduce reduce it. Let me give you some easy ones that, that people should answer. First of all, the 99-week unemployment. You went on kind of a little tirade there about it. Yeah. Ask yourself why we don't means test people past their, their paid for. And when the federal government says, well, okay, we're going to keep you on unemployment past that, why we don't say, well, you know, if you're making $100,000 a year, you don't get that. We don't do that. We don't even means test. Is that the extensions. majority of people we're talking about? It's a small amount, but it matters. We don't means test. We don't means test Medicare. We don't means test Social Security. I we agree. Don't we should. Test. Right. The fact is, the first thing we have to start doing is. So saying, you should be. You're for cutting Medicare and Social uh, Security. I'm for saying that the safety net should be means tested. I believe. Look. Look. I. I will <laughs> never need the Social Security check. But the fact is, I probably should be opted out of it. There are small things we can do to begin making that change. Right. But we're not going to get rid of this with, without touching entitlements. We're going to have to take on entitlements. And, Bill, Republicans and Democrats are going to have to come together to deal with Social Security, Medicare, and these hard ones. Deal with, right. i.e. cut. Yeah, yeah, we keep using these euphemisms. Let's <laughs> yeah, be very right. clear. It's like, okay, there is, there is only like, one way look, to do it, which is cut. All I, all Ration I, care. care. Cut Social Security. I, uh, whenever well, for, people use George Orwell's wonderful uh, British writer, always said, whenever you hear a euphemism, it means somebody is lying or is cowardly. <laughs> right? It, 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 does, it does make you think of that term that we always hear in politics, third rail. You, you almost literally can see politicians going, ah!
<laughs> if I said the word cut, I would actually well, be electric. But you're going to have to make cuts. You are.